So I'll talk today um, about mutational processes. So these are the processes that cause human cancer. And I'm going to focus on something called mutational signatures. So these are the patterns of mutations induced by mutational processes on cancer genomes. We have identified a number of mutational processes in human cancer. Some of those uh, associate with age, so they accumulate as the person gets older. We refer to these processes as clock-like mutational processes, and we think they are responsible for the majority of mutations that accumulate in uh, normal somatic tissue. The way we identify mutational process and the way we identify the clock-like mutational process is by looking at cancer genomics data and using machine learning algorithms to understand which are the different patterns of mutations imprinted on cancer genomes. In regards to clock-like mutational processes, we looked at processes that accumulate with age. So we took patients who we, for whom we have information about their age of diagnosis, and we, we looked whether any mutational process increases its mutational burden with the uh, increase of the patient's age. A lot of my work on mutational signatures and mutational processes is mostly focused actually on cancer prevention, understanding what are the processes that cause cancer, and then based on that, trying to develop a can cancer prevention strategies. I think bioinformatics will have a very, very big impact on cancer research, both for treatment and for prevention. Uh, we can think about predicting response from uh, different drugs, whether these are targeted inhibitors, whether these are uh, immunotherapies. We can think about developing computationally, as I said, understanding what the process that cause cancer and then trying to think of how to prevent those processes. The main interest is to try to un understand the incredible difference in cancer incidence across the world. So there are places across the world that have five, ten times higher incidence of cancer compared to others. So an example will be esophageal cancer in China. It's about, I think, 20 times higher than the esophageal cancer in Italy. So trying to understand what has, how this has happened will be the focus of my research, I think, for the next few years. So there are mutational signatures that are common across all cancer types. Clock-like mutational signatures is one example for that. Another example is a mutational signature induced by the Applebeck family of diaminases. But there are a lot of mutational signatures that are confound to single cancer types. For example, we have a mutational signature associated with tobacco chewing. And as you can imagine, this has been found only in the uh, mount cancers of tobacco chewers. Now, if we compare two people which have the same cancer type, if you look at the mutational signatures in two people who, who have the same, uh, the same cancer type, usually they're completely different. So even though we'll call it breast cancer or lung cancer, we're going to see very different mutational signatures operative in these cancer types, indicating the cancers most likely arose by different means. This is very much what we do right now. We look at single patients, and for a single patient we can say, in these patients, the cancer in this patient was caused by these mutational processes because we see this set of mutational signatures. So I think some of the mutational signatures could be valuable for treatment, and these are signatures affecting failure of DNA repair mechanisms, and we have different inhibitors or different drugs targeting repair mechanisms. But I think the majority, I think the main value there will be actually screening large-scale populations and saying in this population the reason these people get cancer is because they do A, B, and C, and what can we do to prevent A, B, and C? 90% of lung cancers are caused by tobacco smoking, so we know how to prevent the majority of lung cancers. But if you ask the question is how can we prevent the majority of breast cancers, most of the time the answer is harder. To find mutation of signature, we need to sequence the genome of a cancer as of right now. So we need to you know, we need to take a biopsy of the cancer, we need to sequence it, and then we need to do bioinformatics analysis of the sequencing data, and then we can say which are the mutational signatures. So it's more complex than a, a, you know, a clinical test it's at the moment. I think there are several 
large groups. Obviously, there is the Sanger Institute with Mike Stratton working on that, the Broad Institute with uh, Gadi Getz, uh, they're working on that, F folks in uh, uh, Singapore, um, Korea, Japan. So there is quite a lot of things. It's not as popular as immunotherapy, but it's, it's, it's getting quite a lot of people excited about, you know, again, trying to understand what caused the cancer. It means more visibility. It means that uh, I'm going to be able to tell more people about what I do and hopefully, again, excite more people about my research and about cancer prevention.